Ba 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 ba. Space. I'm loving it. Okay, that was pretty good. Okay. All right. So we're in chapter 12, guys. Good job. We're in chapter 12. Let me turn this mic around here. Yeah. Okay, ready? Oh, this is going to be scratchy. All right. We're in chapter 12, space exploration. You should have notes in front of you there to follow along. Uh, we're going to talk about space probes and uh, getting out into space and exploration and that kind of thing. Pretty, pretty interesting stuff. And for your projects, uh, uh, you guys are doing projects right now, this class here. So some of you are doing space exploration as one of your topics. So um, you should know a little bit more about this than me even at this point. That would be great. Uh, let's talk about space probes. Okay, so I guess chapter 12 in your text, where does that start? What page are we on here? 400 maybe-ish? Uh, maybe 394. 394 is where this starts. Okay. So space probes. Let's talk about space probes. Such as Pioneer 10 have been launched by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. That is NASA. You've heard of NASA before. Their response is the, the, the American um, branch of the government there that's responsible for space stuff, right? NASA. It stands for National Aeronautics and Space Administration. So space probes and things have been launched into space since, uh, well, space probes since 1972. Um, the moon landing mission was uh, happened before that. The purpose of these unmanned space probes, okay, so these are not, there's no people in there, right? They're just like, you know, uh, remote control kind of thing, right? Is to explore the universe and send back pictures and data about our solar system and beyond, okay? Now, we're not going to take the time to watch uh, the space probe video. I just had this up as a, as a possibility. I might put this on the website. You can look at this later. I think it's like an hour long or something, so I, you might want to you might want to watch this on your own time. I yeah, I'm not really sure. We're not going to do it in class here today, but there are videos. We are going to watch uh, uh, short clips of uh, videos about space probes that are currently on Mars. So we'll get to that in in a bit. All right. So on these uh, on on these uh, space probes. They are, there are peaceful greetings plaques, and I have uh, censored a little bit the plaque just for your <laughs> protection. Uh, as you notice there, we, we definitely have some, uh, some blurred areas of the plaque. Um, if you want to see the full plaque, I guess this is where you want to look in your textbook, because I think they are, there's a little unfiltered there in the textbook. Oh, but these are, these are sketch drawings. <laughs> these are, yeah, there we go. Now everybody's opened up your textbooks. Okay, okay, now we've got your textbooks here. No, you can't go get your textbook, no. Anyways, so this is pretty interesting. This is pretty interesting, though. Obviously, we have a picture, anatomically correct sketch drawings of males and females there. And notice the man looks really friendly. Look at him. He's got a little smile on his face, or like a little, like maybe like a sheepish kind of grin. I don't know. He's like unsure. He looks pretty unsure, but he's definitely waving. He's definitely waving, okay? And uh, yeah, so we've got uh, a, a sketches of men and women there. Okay, what, does, what is all this about? I don't really understand most of this, but what is this, what is this particular um, you know, graphic say? Hyperfine transition of neutral hydrogen. Okay. So I'm not sure if anyone, if there are aliens, if anyone's going to find this and understand any of this, but this is our best guess. How so, is this like yeah, isn't this great? This is like a real this good is our story. Greeting? This is our peaceful greeting. Well, look at how peaceful this guy is. We're talking about, of course. Look at it, he's so friendly. Um, a silhouette of a spacecraft. Okay, apparently this is a silhouette of a spacecraft. Does that look like a silhouette? I don't know. We should work Maybe. on our alien. Yeah, our alien greetings. Okay, okay. Hands. Remember hands if you want to say something. Um, look at this. This is the binary equivalent of decimal eight. What? I think I'm reading that correctly. Binary equivalent of decimal eight. We should probably study this plaque a little bit more. I am not going to go into too much of it. I just thought I'd give you this graphic to give a little bit. I'm not sure why eight. I don't really know. There's probably an answer to that. Uh, planets of the solar system and binary relative distances. Okay, look at planets of the solar system. Look at there's Saturn. You can tell that one. Okay. And look at... There's a little picture of the space probe, and look at that. It's coming from the third rock from the sun there, Earth. So that's Earth. So look at that. They're saying, hey, you've gotten this space probe from Earth. We are Earthlings. 
position of the sun relative to the 14 pulsars and the center of the galaxy. Ooh, okay. So apparently we know where the center of the galaxy is and where the sun would be relative to the different... <laughs> yeah, this is like from the 70s, so I don't know. They probably would have... Yeah, they probably have something different if they were put this up in space now, but hey, what can you say? So I don't know if anybody's ever going to see this or any beings are ever going to see this, but if they do, unfortunately, they won't have the blurred out uh, special parts there uh, like you guys do. Um, this is too bad for, for them. Okay. Uh, questions? Uh, if we ever actually meet aliens, won't we have to explain to them why we made dozens of movies before we fight and kill them? Yeah. Uh, good question. Yeah, if we ever meet aliens, we'll have to explain why we made movies and why we fought and killed them. Yeah, well, uh, ma yeah, maybe they have movies about killing earthlings. Well, you never know. Then we'd be even. Probably, yeah. Um, I think we, I think we make friends. Some of those movies we make friends with friendly aliens, so we can just say, "Hey, listen, uh, I don't know if you want to watch these movies. This is how friendly aliens are supposed to behave. You can maybe do that. Maybe we should, we should say that. I don't know. You know, I have a list of alien movies for them to watch when they come. Okay. Uh, moving on, moving on. Okay, telescopes, telescopes. The first telescope that was invented was a refracting telescope. Refracting, refracting. Let me see. I think refracting should be a blank, right? Let me just check. Okay, so you want to write this down. Refracting. That's different than reflecting, guys. Different than reflecting. We'll study that in depth in Physical Science 20, but refracting is where light is bent. The use of lenses refract light. So it kind of like light comes in and then light is bent in towards a, a central a central point. And I, I've got some uh, pictures on the next slide here. And you've got it in your notes there. Um, but Refracting telescopes use two lenses to gather and focus starlight. Galileo would use this type of telescope to study the night sky. So Galileo's telescope was a crude refracting telescope. Okay, his initial version only magnified eight times, but was soon refined to 20 times magnification that he used for his observation of Sidereus Nuncius. It had a convex object lens, objective lens, and a concave eyepiece in a long tube. I'll show you a picture of that here in a second. Okay, a reflecting telescope now. Reflecting. So reflecting does not bend light. It simply reflects light. It, there's no bending. There's no focusing uh, of the light. It's just a um, straight reflection. And these telescopes use mirrors instead of lenses to gather and focus light. So reflecting telescopes use mirrors instead of lenses to gather and focus light. Okay, mirrors, okay. Have I got all the, have I got all the uh, blanks here? The first oh, telescope, you should have that in your notes there. Invented was a refracting telescope, uses two lenses to gather and focus. Okay, Galileo, oh yeah, Galileo. Remember, remember the cool thing about Galileo? This is his first name, cool, hey? It's like we have, Mr. Smith over here, we have Mr. Johnson over here, we have Mr. Um, Benson over here, and we have Galileo. Okay, Mr. First Night. Um, I think that uh, one of you should uh, rename yourselves to Galileo, or perhaps maybe set that name aside for one of your uh, offspring someday. That would be good. If any of you ever has a kid named Galileo, you need to message me. You need to contact me and let me know that, okay? Like, I need... Do you understand? I'm serious. You need to let me know because I will like die a happy man after that. I mean, that's, that would basically complete my existence. <laughs> that, would be, that would be all I need. That's all I need. I should have named one of my kids Galileo. The problem was my wife wasn't really too into that. Um, there was some other names I want to name my kids like Arrhenius. Oh, man, I love that name. Arrhenius. Oh, yeah. Guy, guy studied acids, man. Yeah, Arrhenius was good. Avogadro. Oh. Avogadro, that would have been great too. Call him Avi. I don't know. Oh, Galley would be a good nickname for Galileo. Nice. Okay, here's a picture of these telescopes. Sorry, this is a bit fuzzy. The big difference here, look at this. The refracting telescope, light comes in and it's, look at, this is how the light rays are bent here and, ref and refracted. And then there's another lens that kind of straightens it out here to your eyepiece. So this is a... Um, an effective way of magnifying the light that comes in, so the, the image. However, a reflecting telescope, like down at the bottom here, light comes in and bounces off a curved mirror here, 
and the curved mirror focuses onto a, another mirror, which then reflects that to the eyepiece on the side. So here's where you look in, here's where the light comes from, and here's where you look in on this one, and here's where the light comes from. Here, bounces, bounces, bounces. Cool, hey? So that's the main differences, and we have one of these, I think it's Mr. Reed's uh, telescope, we have one of these in the uh, science lab uh, right now, which I am going to talk to him about maybe bringing in here and letting you guys take a look at it. Uh, probably won't get much accomplished here looking in the daylight when we're having class here, but I would encourage you, and I, I, if I haven't already officially done this, I would strongly encourage you to examine the night sky, take a, take a set of binoculars or a telescope if you have one, look at the moon, look at Jupiter, look at Saturn. Um, I, I think I did mention, and we'll talk more about this, you know, I, I guess uh, as we move through this, but uh, let's see, let me write this here. So if this, is the, if this is the horizon and this is south right now, okay, this is just where things are at right now. Um, Jupiter is here. Okay, in the night sky, you look south and you look up to the left. Over here, right about here, is Saturn. Okay, that's where Saturn is, just off to the right. And I believe that Venus is like, would be way down here somewhere. Okay, at this time of the year. You'd be able to see, I think, all three. Oh, and that app that I have is uh, Skyview Light, is what it's called. Yeah. And I found it. I found it on my phone. It was hiding from me, but I found it on the page that I didn't know existed. Skyview Explore the Universe. Okay, so, yeah, and actually, whoa, it's even got, it's even got sound. You can look at the, look at the stars with this cool sound. Yeah, it's just like, this is so beautiful, <laughs> makes me cry. All right, um, ground-based optical telescopes. Okay, so there are some pretty huge optical, now optical means light, okay, some pretty huge telescopes and they're all over the world but they're like huge buildings that you walk into and this is a you know it opens up and you can turn it like it's a turret you know it moves around you can point it at whatever you want and um big telescopes yeah, yeah. What? like a what megamind. still didn't hear what you said megamind. oh like in megamind oh megamind yeah i think maybe i've seen megamind it's not really you know, my style of movie but Megamind. Is that, is that the little alien with the huge head? The blue yeah. guy? Yeah. Okay. Is he blue? He like crashes into like one of these optical telescopes. Oh. He crashes into one of these? Yeah. I see. That's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. Right. Megamind. I'll have to look that up again. Mm-hmm. Okay. What about space-based telescopes? So I just showed you on, on my phone on this app, okay, Skyview Light. I just showed you that we could actually locate where Hubble Space Telescope is on this app. And you can actually search things. You can search Saturn. You can search Hubble. You can search whatever. And it'll, it'll actually point you. Like, it'll say, move your phone to the left. It'll be a little arrow. And you keep moving, and then you can find it. It's pretty cool. But the Hubble Space Telescope, we've talked a lot about this. Uh, it's the most famous space telescope that we have. It was launched in 1990. So I was alive back then. You guys were not alive back then. Actually, you know what? I was 16 in grade 11. Yeah, I just got my license in 1990. Beauty. Yes, we had cars back then. Okay. Uh, license? Yeah, my horse license. Um, you can go see the principal right now, young man. You were 16 in 1990. I was 16 in 1990. Therefore, oh, somebody's doing math here. I was born in 1974. That's right. Ah, close. 40, 45? 46. 72. Wait, no. Okay, you fail math. 47, that's correct. I'm 47 right now. Wow, good job. Hey, we're doing math. Yeah, yeah, this is science, not math, although we have numbers all over this class, don't we? Okay, let's bring it back here. All right, okay, nice. So the Hubble Space Telescope is 4.3 meters wide and 13 meters long. So, again, 13 meters long. We are on the fourth floor of school here. The, the very ledge of that window, I've done this calculation in physics before by dropping things out the window. The, the height, yeah, oh yeah, you can do that. It's good, it's cool. Uh, especially when you drop like computers and stuff. <laughs> but yeah, and they smash on the ground, yep. Anyways, so this ledge right here is 11.64 meters above the ground outside, 11.6. So 13 would be kind of the, the ceiling here, the, our, our ceiling of our classroom. From there all the way down to the ground. So that's how big... That's how long Hubble Space Telescope is. Almost as tall as our school here. And 4.3 meters wide, that would be about the width of the classroom here, a little bit less. Okay, a little bit less wide. Do people go on Hubble Space? 
No, people don't go on the space Hubble telescope. No, it's unmanned. Okay, but it's going to be replaced soon. Oh, listen, this is cool. It was only supposed to last two years. And launched in 1990. So it's been going on for a while now. Yeah, how many years has been going? It's 2021 right now. 31 years. Yep. I'm back in math. I like it. You're back in math. Good. Yeah, I'll let you back into the classroom. So, okay, what are the blanks here for this this one here? So telescopes, Hubble. Hubble Space Telescope, nice. Launched in 1990, nice. It orbits, oh, we didn't talk about this, 600 kilometers above the Earth. It was only supposed to last two years, but it's been going on for 31 so far. Uh, eventually, it's going to be decommissioned. It's not going to work anymore, and they, they do, and I, I don't know much about this one, but it's going to be replaced by the James Webb uh, Telescope. Webb. Yeah, it might, he might be related to Mr. Webb in our, our school here. Yeah. I'm not sure. His middle name is James? Really? Our, our Mr. Webb is middle name James? Wow. He's a telescope named after him. That is cool. Yeah, actually, that is a bit creepy. Why do you know that? Uh, okay. Every time he hears the word Webb. So it was, it was planned to be replacing Hubble in 2014. So it's up in space already. And actually, it is quite a bit further away from space, as you can see here. The James Webb. Let's, here we go. It's located 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. So it's still in orbit, but it's a long ways away. It will use, ready for this, infrared emissions from distant planets and stars and galaxies to view these planets, stars, and other galaxies. So it's not necessarily going to be using the regular spectrum of light, but infrared, uh, the, the infrared portion of the spectrum of, of light to to interpret this. So it's going to be, it's quite a bit advanced. It's, it's quite a bit bigger. And I'll see, I'll show you on the next page, the size comparisons here. So here's, here's Hubble. This is the Hubble right here. And this is the James Webb Space Telescope. Now this would be the, the, um, the, the, the dish that will um, receive the, uh, uh, the infrared uh, signals. And this is sort of the, uh, the reflecting uh, mirror in the Hub Hubble Space Telescope. So it's quite a bit smaller. Hubble's quite a bit smaller here. Anyway, so um, yeah, I haven't heard much about this, but uh, maybe maybe it is shooting data back. We don't. I don't really know. But anyways, that's going to be. Uh, so it's a bigger, more advanced telescope. It's quite a bit further away from the Earth, so it's going to be yeah, it's going to be pretty cool to see what comes with that. Radio telescopes. Okay, optical telescopes collect light. Optical telescopes collect light. That's the, the nature of this word opt. Opti, optical, opti. That's light or vision, seeing light, okay? Radio telescopes collect, you guessed it, radio waves emitted by distant stars and galaxies. Radio waves. So not necessarily light waves, but radio waves. <coughs> the largest such radio telescope is uh, located in China, and it was just a few years ago they finished this. It's, it's incredibly large. Uh, again, you can look up on your own time if you want the largest radio telescope in the world. There are YouTube videos and different articles that you can read and watch about its construction and what it's supposed to do. Um, so anyways, I'll let you do some further research on that. But, but as you can tell, it's collecting you know all these radio waves. And yeah, this is like, I, I'm not sure exactly the size of it, but um, it is, you know, many acres, right? Like this is like, you know, these are trees, right? So this is pretty huge, right? And these are like big, big towers here. And the big towers, um, they kind of suspend inside here. It's actually, it's pretty cool. I did a little research on this one. Um, they suspend here the, um, the this um, uh, center piece here that receives all the signals. So the light or the radio comes in and it bounces. They all bounce towards this. And this whole disc right here is flexible. So it has a very intricate um, web of wires underneath it. Like it's, there's, you know, these thousands of wires. And a computer controls each of the individual panels that make up this. And they can, they can kind of like suck up the panels or bend the panels in a certain way so that it will reflect all the um, transmission that it gets from space all to this one special spot here and then they can receive the signal from here. So the whole thing, the whole thing can move, uh, all the individual pieces can move just just right to, re to reflect all of these radio waves into this, this center module here. 
So pretty cool. Um, again, I don't know too much about it. Uh, you know, in the future, maybe we'll be, it'll be giving us producing images and, and giving us data from, um, I'm sure, galaxies that we don't know anything about. So pretty cool. Any questions? Yep. All right, Earthrise. I just thought this was kind of cool. It's in your, it's in your textbook uh, as well, Earthrise. You've all seen this probably famous picture right here. Um, this is a picture of the Earth as it, um, as it uh, is suspended over the surface of the moon. So this is taken from the surface of the moon. In 1968, Apollo 8 sent back to Earth this picture. And it helps us understand our place in the universe. Our planet is created uniquely for life in the amazing way, uh, when I look at this, the amazing way that it hangs in space. I mean, we see the moon in the sky all the time, but to see the Earth like this from the moon is pretty cool. And, and I suppose it would be pretty amazing if you were an astronaut and on the moon and could look back on the Earth. It would just be unbelievable. So it's pretty cool. Is that your home screen for a little while? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I had a, I had a, a friend when I was growing up, and he had his, his whole bedroom the, was this mural of this. <laughs> it was pretty cool. I still remember that. But um, anyways, yeah, pretty cool. So Earthrise, you know like Sunrise, right? This is Earthrise is what it's called. And, uh, and there we go. A little, that's, that's where we live. We're on there. Cool. Okay, International Space Station. Let's talk about the ISS. Assembled in stages since 1998, it orbits, orbits 400 kilometers above the Earth and is the base for international space study. Canada's significant contribution to the space station is the Canadarm2. This robotic device moves people and equipment around as they work outside the space station. And I will show you a picture of that in a second. So you should have filled out in your notes. Since 1998, it was started construction. It is 400 kilometers above the Earth. Hubble is 600, so they don't run into each other, but they you know, probably could be seen, one to the other. Um, Canada's significant contribution was the Canadarm2. Canadarm. Like, yeah, I don't know. Um, I've never been up there. Um, you, I mean, it's 200 kilometers away still, so it'd be pretty small. I mean, it's right. It's you know the size of it. So could you see it 200 kilometers away from us here? I don't know. I mean, they would be able to identify it, but it wouldn't be like just flying just outside the windows. Like, whoa, hey, there's Hubble. <laughs> Almost hit us. No, it's still 200 kilometers away. So 200 kilometers away is si significant. I mean, it's almost here to Saskatoon almost, right? So that's a long ways away. So would I be able to see anything that far away? I don't know. I mean, with a telescope or with, with aid, you probably would. But this robotic device moves people and equipment around as they work in outside work outside oh outside outside as they work outside the space station all right so here's what it looks like here's the Canada arm 2 is a picture this this picture is actually in your textbook and uh there's a big uh, a big label canada on there that everybody can see you know you've seen these pictures with this big arm so this is a big robotic arm obviously this guy's having a good trip right there um hopefully hopefully he's stuck to that and uh, so they're moving them around out there. No, you can't swim in space yeah. because, you know, like uh, if you have like a, some kind of propulsion jet pack, yeah, that, that would probably work. But uh, there's no, e even the propulsion jet pack, it only works with when there's something to push against, right? Um, the, the space in space, I mean, there, there theoretically is some substance to space, but there's, it's not air, it's not water, it's not solid, it's... It's empty. It's completely empty. So you can't wave your arms and like swim anywhere in space. It's it's yeah. Your inertia and inertia is a property of all matter that resists um, change in uh, motion. So your inertia, if you got kind of um, flicked off the arm here, or if you like, you know, somehow were released from the arm, your inertia would carry you uh, away, and there would be nothing to stop you. There's no there's no air. Even if you like shot a fire extinguisher or something, what would it be pushing against? Nothing. Uh, so you'd have some kind of chemical, just neutral chemical reaction. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, space travel, spaceships and the movies and stuff. I don't know. There's some technology we don't know about yet. But uh, anyways, pretty interesting. Um, and yes, there are, apparently there are dead bodies in space. Yep, there are dead bodies in space. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. There's going to be some chemical processes that would happen. Probably, you know, in space inside that like, suit, but... Wait, they didn't, like, the Mario guy just...
Uh, the Near Earth Asteroid Rendezvous. Okay. Okay. N E A R. Near. This probe was created and designed to land on an asteroid. It was launched in 96 and landed in 2001. Astronomers learned about the composition and properties of asteroids and how they interact with other things in space. So there are probes that land on Mars, that land on the moon, that land on asteroids even. And this is a small picture, I guess, of that. Just the one I found. I didn't really, I didn't really find any credible pictures of, you know, from this thing or whatever that were actually an asteroid. It was mainly artist conceptions. But the uh, near-Earth asteroid rendezvous, something you could uh, look up. So your blanks there would be asteroid. It was launched in 96, landed in 2001. Astronomers learned about composition. So composition is the fancy word for what the asteroid would be composed of. What something is composed of would be its composition. So what is it made of? And the properties of asteroids. So are they rocks? Are they ice? Are they, what are they? Are they uh, materials we don't know about? And stuff like that. And also how they interact with other things in space. So these asteroids have been floating around in space for a while. They've been subject to much more radiation than, than we've been subject to on Earth because of our atmosphere, thankfully, and things like that. So they'd be able to study. So again, you can look up the near, that's the near Earth asteroid rendezvous and do some more of your own research on that. But there are probes that land on asteroids. All right, probes to Mars. There have been nine successful U.S. Mars landing. Viking 1 and Viking 2, both in 1976. Pathfinder in 1997. Spirit and Opportunity, both in 2004. Uh, you guys were pretty young. In, you guys born in 2004? No. Not quite, eh? Okay, fine. Phoenix 2008. Any of you born in 2008? No. Really? Yeah. Curiosity 2012. So you guys were born when this one went up. Curiosity. Insight, shh, insight to 2018, and perseverance in 2021. So the latest um, probe to go into Mars was perseverance in 2021. These continue to send information, well, maybe not all of them, but send information about Mars. And I'm wondering what you guys think about a possible colonization of Mars. Do you think we'll ever do that? Do you think that people will actually ever be living on Mars someday? I'm going to show you a little clip of this video. I just came across this yesterday, and I'm like, what is going on here? So <clears throat> this is a picture of the Mars rover. I think this is Perseverance. Whether it's an actual picture or not, I am not 100% sure, but this is what it would look like. This is the Martian landscape. And um, the video I'm going to show you, here's the, um, uh, here's the link. I'll probably put that on my website for you to, to check out um, later, but uh, we'll, we'll, I'll show you a little, little piece of that here. Um, in class here now. So what did the Mars rover uh, find? We're going to find out. Check this out. This is Mr. Daniel. Okay. Anyways, this, look at this. Can you believe that? What the heck is that, eh? It kind of looks like, yeah, it kind of almost looks like a creature of some sort, but this, it looks like a boat or a, like, okay, they're going to try and zoom in on this thing. Look at it. This is actually from the rover, from Perseverance rover. Yeah, it kind of looks like bones or ribs. It could be like a, a boat or something. Or it could be just something we're making up here that it's just makes it look like something else. I don't know. But look at that. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to keep going here. They're in like lines. Yeah, like, like look at that. Does that look accidental? No. Well, you know what's funny is we... we <laughs> We look at biology and the, the amazing creation that we're in, and we think that that came by accident, but we look at something like this, and it's like, whoa, that is too organized. That's too amazingly complex for that to be an accident. Look at somebody at the, they built like a boat or something. Isn't that amazing? We, have, we kind of have one set of standards for some things in our lives, but oh, yeah, when we look at the, our DNA and we look at our cells, it's like, oh, that probably could have happened by accident. Look at that. That almost looks like a boat. I'm wondering, that looks like, a, like maybe somebody's living in there. I don't know where they're going here now. Yeah, I don't think there's a door. Do, do, do. Oh, come on. I don't want to hear about this. So, so check this out. Check this out. That's a, that's a good view of this first part. Yeah. Look at that. 
It does kind of look like wood. This looks like, looks like a canoe or something. Maybe somebody was canoeing on Mars in space. Oh, look, it says Elon Musk on there. Look, it's carved in. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, anyways, that's amazing. I think there's somebody living in there. I was looking for like Gollum to poke, poke his head out or something or some kind of like... Maybe Megamind will poke his head out there. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, so something pretty cool. Okay, so as we round up this lesson, grade nines, I want you to, this is in your textbook. We can also search online. Take some time to research and describe at least 10 different technologies that have resulted from space exploration. So we won't take much time to talk about these, but I do want you to do your own research because people often say, oh, why are we sending things to space? Why are we going to the moon? What about these probes and satellites and pictures and data? What's the big deal? You will be shocked. You will be shocked to find all of the things, the technologies that have come from space exploration. For example, getting to space, okay? Getting to space. There are lots of technologies that were developed to get uh, probes and to get rockets to space. Guess what? We use those. Guess what? GPS, cell phones, all this sort of stuff. All these technological, technological pieces that we use now actually came from this. So um, I want you to add these to your notes for this unit. Now, I don't know if you have room on this notes paper that I put out to you, but a uh, separate piece of paper. Actually, you got lots of room here on the back of your notes package there. Uh, jot down, okay, from your textbook and from online. Uh, all right, but look at your textbook uh, first because they've got some good stuff in there too. Um, of what technologies, what has resulted from search in space, okay? Yeah. All right, that is, that's your chapter 12 uh, lesson there.